record. So vector graphics. Uh, vector graphics are very useful in many circumstances. They have small file sizes and are highly scalable, so they don't pixelate when zoomed in or blown up to a large size. In this article, we'll show you how to include one into your web page. Uh, let's see. So what are vector graphics? On the web, you'll work with two types of images, roster images and vector images. So roster images are defined using a grid of pixels. A roster image file contains information showing exactly where each pixel is to be placed and exactly what color it should be. Popular web roster formats include bitmap, PNG, JPEG, and GIF. Vector images are defined using algorithms. A vector image file contains shape and path definitions that the computer can use to work out what the image should look like when rendered on the screen. The SJV format allows us to create powerful vector graphics for use on the web. So to give you an idea of the difference between the two, let's look at an example. You can find this example live on our GitHub uh, repo. It shows two seemingly identical images side by side of a red star and a black drop shadow. The difference is that the left one is a PNG and the right one is an SVG image. The difference becomes apparent when you zoom in on the page. The PNG image becomes pixelated as you zoom in because it contains information on where each pixel should be and what color. When zoomed in, each pixel is increased in size to fill up multiple pixels on the screen. So the image starts to look blocky. The vector image, however, to look, uh, however, continues to look nice and crisp because no matter what size it is, the algorithms are used to work out the shape in the image, uh, with the values being simply scaled as it gets bigger. Okay. Yeah, vector graphics are really cool. Yeah. I wonder if this means we can like use the. Uh... Like you can infinitely scale them. <laughs> they never get blurry. Have you ever used uh, Illustrator? Uh, I haven't. I've not touched it yet, though. <laughs> I'm thinking of like learning it, though, because it'd probably be pretty useful. It's it's super useful. It's all about vector graphics. Yeah. Oh. I didn't know you could put these into your. Okay, I didn't know like. Yeah, actually, that makes a lot of sense. That'd be pretty good for illustrations. Um, okay, so moreover, vector image files are much lighter than the roster equivalents. Am I pronouncing that right? Roster? Because they only need to hold a handful of algorithms rather than information on every pixel in the image individually. True. What is SVG? SVG is an XML-based language for describing vector images. It's basically markup, like HTML, except that you've got many different elements for defining the shape you want to appear in your image and the effects you want to apply to those shapes. SVG is for marking up graphics, not content. At the simplest end of the spectrum, you've got elements for creating simple shapes, like circles, or circle and rect. More advanced SVG features include FE color matrix, transform colors using transform transformation matrix, animate, animate parts of your vector graphic, and mask, apply a mask over the top of your image. As a simple example, the following code creates a circle and a rectangle. SVG okay. version 1.1, base profile full. I guess this is like the width of the rectangle? Um, I suppose, yeah. Well, I think that's just the area. Oh, no, no, that's just the area of the, the whole SVG. And then rectangle, the width and height is defined by percentage. So it fills everything. Black. And then, is this pixel maybe? So the X, C, X, C, Y. R. Okay, I'm sure they'll explain all of this, hopefully. That's great. It's falling up with a blue, a blue circle on a black background. In the example above, 
you may get the impression that SVG is easy, easy to hand code. Yes, you can handle hand code simple SVG in a text editor, but for a complex image, this quickly starts to get very difficult. For creating SVG image, images, most people use a vector graphics editor like Inksca Inkscape or Illustrator. Mm. Packages allow you to create a, var a variety of illustrations using various graphics tools and create approximations of photos. For example, Inkscape's trace bitmap feature. SVG has some additional advantages besides those described so far. Text and vector images remain remains accessible, which also benefits your SEO. SVGs lend themselves well to styling and scripting because each component of the image is an element that can be styled via CSS or scripted via JavaScript. Ooh. So why would you want, why would anyone want to use raster graphics over SVG? Well, SVG does have some disadvantage. Um, SVG can get complicated very quickly, meaning that the file sizes can grow. Complex SVGs can also take significant proce processing time in the browser. SVG can be harder to create than raster images, depending on what kind of image you are trying to create. SVG is not supported in older browsers, so may not be suitable if you need to support older versions of Internet Explorer with your website. SVG started being supported as of IE9. Raster graphics are arguably better for complex precision images, such as photos, for the reasons described above. In, the, in Inkscape, save your files as plain SVGs to save space. Also, please refer to this. Mm. Uh, oh, that's for Inkscape. Okay. I don't use that. Yeah, no. So adding SVGs to your page in this section will go through the different ways in which you can add SVG vector graphics to your web page. So the quick way is using the IMG element. Um, embeds an image into the document, okay. Uh, to embed an SVG via an image element, you need to reference it in the SRC attribute as you'd expect. You will need a height and width attribute or both if the SVG has no inherent aspect ratio. Uh, if you have not already done so, please read the images in HTML. Okay, we did that. Alt, okay. Uh, that seems easy enough. So when you do like this, and you just embed it, right? Do you still have all the same? Do you still have all the same like abilities to modify it and give it animations as you would if you like written like wrote it out in here? Do you know? Um, I mean, you should be able to, because they said that the the stuff in an SVG is are just elements, so you can select those. I mm. guess. I don't know. I'll have to see that once they talk about animations. Pro, uh, quick familiar image syntax with built-in text equivalent. Okay. You can make the image into a hyperlink by nesting the IMG inside an A element. Okay. You cannot manipulate the... Oh, true. Okay. I guess you can't. If you want to control SVG mm -hmm. content with CSS, you must include inline CSS styles in your SVG code. Uh, external style sheets invoked from SVG from the SVG file take no effect. You cannot restyle the image with a CSS pseudo class like focus. True. Uh, troubleshooting and cross-browser support. So for browsers that don't support SVG, you could reference a PNG or JPEG from your SP SRC attribute and use an SRC set attribute, which only recent browsers recognize, uh, to reference the SVG. This being the case, only supporting browsers will load the SVG. Older browsers will load the PNG image instead. Mm, I see. Okay, so you can have uh, fallbacks. Mm -hmm. 
you can also use SVG as CSS background images as shown below. Why is my scroll now working? Uh, you can use SVG as CSS background images as shown below in the code. Older browsers will stick with the PNG that they understand. Newer browsers will load the SVG. So background URL fallback.png, no repeat center, background image. Oh, I see. Okay. Like the image method described above, inserting SVGs using CSS background images means that the SVG can't be manipulated with JavaScript, but it's also subject to the same, and it's also subject to the same CSS limitations. So if your SVGs aren't showing up at all, it might be because your server isn't set up properly. If that's the problem, this article will point you in the right direction. Um, how to include SVG code into your HTML. You can open up the, you can also open up the SVG file in a text editor, copy the SVG code and paste it into your HTML document. This is sometimes called putting your SVG inline or inlining SVG. Make sure your SVG code snippet begins and ends with the SVG tags. Um, here's a very simple example of what you might paste into your document. Oh, I see, okay. Putting SVG inline can reduce your loading time. Uh, you can align classes and IDs to SVG elements and then style them with CSS either within the SVG or whenever you put the CSS style rule for your HTML content. In fact, you can use any SVG presentation attribute as a CSS property. Oh. Inlining SVG is the only approach that lets you use CSS interactions and CSS animations on your SVG image. You can make SVG markup into a hyperlink by wrapping it into an A element. Uh, the problems with this is only suitable if you're using the SVG in only one place. Duplications make for resource intensive maintenance. Um, extra SVG code increases the size of your HTML file. The browser cannot cache inline SVG as it would cache regular image assets you may include fallback in a foreign object element, but the browser, but browsers that support SVG still download any fallback images. You need to weigh whether the extra overhead is really worthwhile just to support an obsolete browser. Hmm. True. So how do you embed an SVG with an iframe? Uh, you can open SVG images in your browser just like web pages. So embedding an SVG document with an iframe is done just like we studied from objects to iframe. So you're just embedding a regular, regular thing. All right. This is definitely not the best method to choose. True. Iframes do have fallback mechanisms, as you can see but browsers only display the fallback if they lack support for iframe altogether. Moreover, unless the SVG and your current web page have the same origin, you cannot use JavaScript on your main web page to manipulate it. In this active learning section, we'd like you to have a go at playing with some SVG for fun. In the input section below, you'll see that we have already provided you with some samples to get you started. You can also you go to the SVG element, element reference, find out more details about other toys you can use and try those out too. This section is all about practicing your research skills and having some fun. There's a lot of elements for SVG. <laughs> uh, okay, so rectangle width. I'm, I'm guessing this is the... Okay, so this is percent. This is vector graphics. 50%. True, uses half the 110% uses more. 200%, okay. I actually want to try this on the. Oh. 
What? So the, the blue circle always appears in the bottom right. Like if you increase your browser size. And if you zoom in. Or zoom out. Okay. This is weird. <laughs> it's not like you're zooming in. They just, I don't know, they move the elements and enlarge them a bit. So radius is bar is radius, right? Yeah. Must be. And then CY is what? Oh, I see. Um, I guess that's the position. Yeah. Or X and Y, that would make sense. What's with the C, though? Let's see. So X is very left. So it's like, what about 50? So I guess. Oh, Y coordinate. So coordinate Y. Yeah. That's why. Uh, defines a Y axis coordinate of a center point. So to at 50, that's like X equals zero. And zero. And then at 25. That's you. Okay. Interesting. Read this and then put fifty. Because it's based on what the pixels. Hmm. One. I'm guessing it's based on the the width of the the page. So let's say the page. Okay. So if you put in percentages. It bases it off a hundred, and then if you remove the percentages, it goes off like pixels. True. Okay. Can I do like one fifty? One ten. Okay. True. Uh, polygon points. Oh, what is up with this polygon? And it's like the very center of the circle. So if you want it in the very center, do 50 and 50, I assume. Yeah, okay. Polygon points 120, 0, 240, 225. Then look up. The points are pairs of X and Y coordinates. Oh, I see. Interesting. Wait, what X and Y? Apparently. So if I change this. So that is the, the top y is zero. The top. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So Y0 means it's all the way up here in this corner. And yeah. X200 means it's on the 200th pixel. Yeah. So what if I change this to percent? So just like a graph, basically. No, that doesn't work. So why doesn't percent work with this? I'd say 10%. It just like gets removed. Mm. Okay, whatever. I guess pixels just work with this. Um, this is one of those things that like 
<laughs> You're never gonna get right on the first try. <laughs> it's like a lot of trial and error too. Maybe because it's the coordinates. Um. Well, I guess you could do the element next inspect. Um. Or something. Hmm. Okay, so I get this. And then what if you add another set of, uh, so let's say like 50. Um, well, then it will turn into a rectangle. It'll turn into a rectangle, right? Yeah, because it has four points. Then. So let's say, uh, I don't know. Um, 240, zero. Whoa. Wait, what? Whoa. Um, okay, what is this point? Hold up. Okay, 240. Yeah, that's the bottom right. That's the bottom right. The other one is the top. The first one is the top. Yeah, the first one is the top. And then this one's the left. Yeah. So I'm guessing if I want one here, I would need to add it here. So let's try um, 240 comma zero. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so it goes clockwise. And then- I guess you can just add infinite pairs or points. And then if I want to make a, what comes after a rectangle? A pol uh, what's the shape with five sides? <laughs> uh, okay, the shape with five sides. If I wanted to make one of those, it would be, let's say... Isn't that a pentagon? Pentagon, yes, that's the word I'm looking for. I was trying to think, why am I not remembering this? Let's say 50. No, that doesn't work. You can't add more than four points? That doesn't make any sense. 240. Okay. There's another point. Oh, you can. It's just got to be in. All right, this is going to be a lot of trial and error, I feel like. I probably won't mess with this at all. <laughs> Fill green. Like, it doesn't seem that useful. I'd rather just go into Illustrator. True. But my question, so let's say you want to do something in Illustrator. How do you get the code for this? You save it as a SVG and, and import it. Really? So that's yeah, it. that's what I assume. Or you mean the uh, the code itself? I don't know. Let's see. Illustrator. Don't hate on my art, all right? This was like the first tutorial I ever did. <laughs> okay. Illustrator takes forever. And oh, this is my first time opening it actually. There we go. Hmm. New. I need to free up some space. Yo, I remember back in the day, eight gigs of RAM was all you needed. Now it's like not enough at all. Wait, you have eight gigs and you're this slow? I have eight gigs and it's this slow. I know Do you like look for if there if you have any malware or something. Possibly, I have no idea. Because like your task manager isn't filled up. It's not. Def, yeah, it's not. I mean, sort of. Usually my RAM is like at eighty percent. Oh. I don't know why, but uh, I'm at forty percent. But then again, I have sixteen. Okay, that makes sense. Six, six gigs right now. Yeah. Yeah, sixty-five percent. I don't know what is adding. Your, um, what do you, do you know your processor? What processor you have? Oh I know. Taking how slow this is. I feel like it's maybe because I'm streaming or I'm trying to also record this video. It might be because you're recording as well. Like it might be better if I if I record. 
Uh, I don't know. This is a processor. I mean, it's a pretty beefy processor. Is it though? One point nine gigahertz is not a lot. Uh, I mean, usually it's better. Hold up. It does the whole turbo boost or whatever. I don't know, whatever. My processor is a uh, at three point eight gigahertz. Jesus, are you on a computer or a laptop? I'm on a like uh, a computer. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Ah, uh, so file, save as. Some quality art right there. Mm. Desktop. Oh, SVG, huh. And then save. Okay. Sure. Embed. So this is the code for the SVG. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. Uh, While well, you put that in a, in an SVG tag, I, I'd, I'd assume. Okay, let's try this. Hey, wow. <laughs> okay, true. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? And then you can edit the points. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, that's a lot easier than. Uh... So how did you uh, how did you export as a code? I, I didn't watch you do that. I just pressed this thing, save SVG. Oh, okay. And this thing popped up and I just copied the SVG tags. Huh. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Summary, this article has provided you with a quick tour of what vector graphics and SVG are, are they useful to know about and how to include SVG inside your web pages was never intended to be a full guide to learning SVG. Just a pointer so you know what SVG is if you meet it in your travels around the web. So don't worry if you don't feel like you are an SVG expert yet. We've included some links below that might help you if you wish to go and find out more about how it works. In the last arg article of this module, we will explore responsive images in detail, looking at the tools HTML has to allow to allow you to make your images work better across different devices. Okay, sweet. Let me do a quick...